Ladies and, gen ladies and gentlemen, uh, Keikim here. Uh, hope you guys had a good day tr uh, trading today. Market is up 2.6% uh, today. Market is up quite a bit uh, because we've seen some selling pressure yesterday, right? We've been seeing a lot of gaps, and we talked about the yesterday. Uh, just a lot, a lot of gaps we're seeing here. You can see even back in April 21st, we saw a gap up. And, and, and very similar activities been going around. Here, let's make this a little bit, it's getting a little bit messy here. So I'm gonna get rid of that for now. Uh, let me get rid of this, because these are the levels that I was giving you uh, this week. But here, so we've been seeing very similar activities pretty much throughout this week. Um, actually, since last last few weeks, you know, you can see that on the April 21st, um, you can see that we saw a gap up, right? And then we continued to rise higher, and then it failed, and we came near to that gap area, kind of retesting that gap area. We got up here, we gapped up again, we continued higher, we gapped up again, we failed, we got near to that gap area. So that's kind of what we've been seeing here. We gap up, you know, continue higher for a day or two, and then we pull back next day, retest that gap area, and then, and then day after, we continue higher. Next day, we gap up, continue higher. And the next day, we gapped up, we failed. We come back to retest that gap or that gap area. And then today, I think this is the first time where market just gapped it over, right? It's almost like market didn't want to deal with these, you know, these moves. So they, it said, you know what, let's just skip a day. Because that's what we've been doing, right? We gap up and we rise higher. And then we pull back. We get, and, then, and then we continue to rise higher. And then we pull back. This time, we didn't even see, you know, the marching higher move. We just gapped it over. And then we continue higher. So you know what I'm going to do? So we talked about this, uh, this support area. Let's just continue. Let's leave that there. So in case the market pulls back to the vicinity. So right now, we are now entering into this gap. We're starting to eat up this gap here. So I'm going to move that. We still got some gap left there. And then uh, we opened up another gap today, right? So I think that's the important level. And I actually think this level, and we talked about it yesterday, this was important level. And we've been talking about this level uh, last couple days. And that's what I call, you know, important pivot. It was that strong support there. And it was a very, very strong resistance because remember back in March 10th, that's when we saw 20, 20 some percent decline. So very, very important lower high. We got to that level back in April 17th. And that was a level when we saw actually island top reversal. And that thing tanked pretty hard you saw that this thing gapped down continued higher right and we saw where we found support though we saw that here and i'm going to actually put a blue line here because i think this is very important it's a very very important level right there see that right there right so you can see that was the level here right on april um 17th so a gap, we saw we saw um, island top reversal. We gap down. We continued lower, right? And it looked like this was gonna, this thing was gonna fail, but we held that rising pivot, and that's the vicinity where we saw that longer term moving average there. That's actually 70 SMA on this 65 minute chart. If you wanna put that in your chart, somebody asked me on YouTube the other day, and that's where we found support. And ever since then, market has been marching higher in a fashion where we gap up, continue higher, pull back, retest the gap area. We march higher and we pull back, retest that gap area. We gap up, we're pulling back a little bit. So we've been continuing to cultivate higher lows and higher highs. This uptrend support is still valid. I actually want to bring this back also at about uh, 291 level. In case the bears bring it down uh, tomorrow or next couple of days, that's a level to watch. But we have, we, you know, bulls been faithfully cultivating higher highs here. And we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. And not to mention, you know, longer term perspective, we've just cleared 
of, of this very, very important pivot. And I, I, I tweet this, tweeted this out uh, today on my uh, Twitter account at 2K Kim and stock tweets. And you know, it, it, it looks better if you look at it on the daily, how important this level was. This, this 290-ish level, this was a very, very important level. And you can see that it was, it was a sensitive level. Initially bounced, and then that thing tanked, right? We saw a big move here. And, and, and in, in, in this, from here, April 1st to April 16, let's look at that. I mean, that's, a, that's close to 18% move, and we saw about 5% decline, right? And, and, and in that 8% move, this is the first time we saw that 5% decline. That was a big decline. That's the first big, I believe that was, a, that was the biggest decline we've seen in April. And it happened, not in a, some random place, but right at this pivot, right? At this pivot, that is a very, very important level that we've been highlighting for pretty much the entirety of this week and last week, right? And yesterday, and this was yesterday, yesterday we initially gapped up, again, that important pivot level, right? So we initially popped, we gapped above it, and I think a lot of bulls were excited seeing that we are getting above that important pivot, and we wanted, buyers wanted to see this level hold. We didn't hold that, we continued lower, and I think at this time, a lot of bears thought, you know what, that's a failed breakout attempt, and maybe there's a good chance that this could bring it down. Obviously, there's always a chance, but this is the reason why I've been saying you want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers when we're in an uptrend because we're still cultivating and bulls being faithfully, even when we failed, we still cultivated higher high, right? Continue to cultivate higher highs and higher lows, not to mention these moving averages still climbing higher. So now we're above 281. And a lot of things change actually. Now they were, we're getting above 280, 290. I actually have to say, even in intermediate term, the sentiment is starting to turn bullish. Not looking at 65 minute chart. If I were to look at daily chart, and that's what I do on the uh, weekend video. So on, on, on the weekend, I put out the market update videos, which I look at the daily chart. On the daily chart, you know, I've been talking about, uh, you know, for my clients and also for my um, followers that we are in a primary term uptrend. We've been talking about that. You know, uh, we, are, we are in a minor term uptrend. And this, this was a whole time in April, the month of April. But we were in a downtrend, in a minor, in an intermediate term. Looking at things more of a, you know, obviously when I say primary, I mean going all, going all the way back to 9, 2009. So in a prime intermediate term, I was still categorizing this market as kind of a bearish. And with this move that we've just, you know, able to get above it, and obviously, we want to see if we can hold above this level. I am categorizing this market in the intermediate term, neutral to bullish, neutral to bullish. So we got the uh, primary term. I'm going to be labeling it as bullish, and I've been labeling it as bullish this entire time. And then I'm going to label intermediate term, neutral to bullish. And then obviously, in the minor term, we're talking this move right here. Um, it, it bullish obviously with uh, with uh, you know with the higher lows and higher highs. In the micro term, we have this uptrend holding. We're above the. We also made another higher high. Also, uh, we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers and any kind of pullback. I think we're gonna find some good support here, and then probably gonna bulls kind of trying to come back up here, trying to fill these gaps. We got gap at 300s. And then, yeah, in that near 300 level. So I think the next step for the bulls is to fill these gaps and kill the downside pressure from that level. We got another gap coming up here um, at 3, 10, 13. That will be for the for the next time. Again, bears, and you're a bear. You're you're extremely, you know, bearish in this market. You want to see this thing um, coming down, retest, and gapping it down. You can't try to bring it down and try to march lower because there are too, way too many, uh, we're too many uptrends. I mean, uh, we're too many supports. We got horizontal support, pivot supports. We got the gap area that's going to provide a support. We got the rising uptrend support. We got some of these moves, some of that shorter term moving averages support. 
and we got some of these level of support. So the best way for the bears really jumpstart this thing would be like maybe a big gap down and then continuing lower. But we've been talking about how, you know, when the bulls are kind of hanging around and we've been talking about it throughout pretty much all throughout the April, and I mentioned it many times, several times on my market update video that when, when, when you see price kind of hanging around, especially when the market has been bounced off of the lows after oversold condition, that's what bulls, that's how bulls operate. You know, you don't want to let bulls hang around because the longer they float around, they're going to find momentum to make it move higher. What bears want to do, they just want to bring it down. And we've seen the true form of bearish activity in March. I mean, the worst ever, right? I mean, that's the true form of bears, how they like to do things. Just bring it down. No consolidation, no waiting around, man. No flagging, no nothing. Right? But the longer bears hang around or bulls hang around, the better it is for the buyers. Uh, before I let you guys go, let's look at the oscillator. Just do a little update or a quick update on this. So the oscillators, we talked about it yesterday. We did see initially a curling down, but you can see we curl back up. This time around, we did not choose, the market did not choose to go all the way back down to the oversold level. Instead, we stopped short. We're curling back up here. That means looking at this short-term 65-minute oscillator, there's a little bit of room to move because you know bulls kind of um, rested a little bit. And that's what happened yesterday because we saw that over overbought sentiment yesterday. Um, you know, yesterday at the highs, and then as the price pulled back, bulls uh, were able to kind of rest, and we brought it up. And you can see we saw that we curling up here. And in this, and the interesting part about this um, sequence, though, you know what's interesting about it is here. I'll let you guys go with this. Is that we are cultivating higher lows also in this oscillator versus when it was cultivating lower lows and lower highs. That was in itself kind of a bearish divergence in the short term. You get that higher high and lower highs. Kind of similar here. We got the higher high. Lower high. So that in itself was a bearish divergence that we're seeing in the short term. We're not seeing that here today. So something has changed. Bulls are gaining a lot of momentum, a lot of confidence. And I think that's why we saw a lot of stocks were up a lot today. Especially, you know, small caps. IWM was up like 5%. The banks were up like 3.5%. I mean, Qs. I mean, these large tech stocks were already up quite a bit for the year. Yet they were still managed to do like 4% or something like that today. So it's a very, very bullish day today. And I think I think because that was an important pivot that a lot of people are watching and a lot of people are looking. And this was a lot of a cycle. Not not it's not that everybody's looking at charts all day long and then like seeing, okay, I'm gonna be very, very bullish at 290, 280. That it's not like that. It's just that you know, most people are kind of looking at how the price behave. And, and we've been pretty much going up throughout the month of April. It's getting attention to a lot of these uh, investors who's been watching on sideline. Maybe they close out all their positions, um, you know, when this thing tanked in March. And now they're like, huh, this market keeps on going higher. So that kind of a fear of missing out, like, you know, they want to get back in. The shorts are getting squeezed. And, and maybe longs are even buying even more as we see that the momentum is getting built. And that's why... That's why these slow cultivation of higher lows and higher highs done a lot of work from the buyers in the in early part of April, and then we just thrust it higher, right? That's kind of what the bear bulls were doing, is that they were really trying to gain momentum there and then thrust it higher above 290. So let's see if we can hold above this. Um, so I have one more day tomorrow. So we'll come back tomorrow and update you guys on this and see how the market is behaving, If see if we can hold some of these levels. Uh, you guys have a wonderful evening and good luck trading tomorrow.